When we first saw conditional statements, we saw that we could nest them inside of one another, if, and then inside that if, we could have another if. We can do the same thing with for loops. We can nest loops. And I'll show you some situations where this makes sense, but first, we're gonna try and walk through how it works. Sometimes it can be a little bit confusing or difficult to wrap your head around. So we're gonna start with a single loop. Let's just go from one to 10. Let i equal one, i less than or equal to 10, and then i plus plus. And I'm going to console.log the string, outer loop, and then also i, and we get outer loop one down to outer loop 10. And now I'm going to add in a second inner loop. Now this loop is going to go the other direction from 10 down to one. So we'll start with let, and then what should we name the variable? This is a really important topic and we'll actually come back to it in the next section in more detail. But for now, you should know you can get away with naming your variable i again, which seems like it shouldn't work. If we typed in our console, let i equal zero, and then I tried to make another i with a different value, I get an error. It says i has already been declared. But in this case, these i's, this let i and this let i, have a different scope. We haven't talked about scope. That's what we'll talk about in the next section. So for now, we're not gonna go with i. And in general, it doesn't make sense. It's a bad idea to use the same name in a nested loop. It's confusing to look at. And if you needed access to both these variables inside this inner loop, you wouldn't have it. If you name them the same thing, there's no way to reference both of them, or at least not an easy way. So that's not what we're going to do. We're gonna go with j, which is pretty standard. If you use i, then move on to j for a nested loop. And then if there's a loop inside of j, use k. And usually you shouldn't have more, or you should try and avoid more nesting. Uh, I try and just do two loops whenever possible at most. Okay, so we'll go from 10, and we'll keep going while j is greater than or equal to zero, and we'll subtract, how about two each time instead of one? So our outer loop is going to go from one to 10, the inner loop will go from 10 to zero by subtracting twos. And in here, I'll console.log inner loop and then j. Okay, let's see what we get. Okay, so let's take a look at how this is working. What I'm going to do to make it easier to see the difference, I'm going to indent this string. I'm just gonna add some spaces on the inner loop. And that way we get some differentiation. So if we look at the outer loop only, we're going from one to 10. Here is the first time through that outer loop, then the second time, third time, all the way down to here. But every single time this outer loop runs, just a single iteration, the inner loop completes its full cycle. So that's why we end up with 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. And then we hit the end of this loop here. So that means we're at the end of this first cycle. Then it starts over. i now goes up to 2. And we console.log outer loop. Then we hit this loop, and it has to finish executing. So it does its whole thing. 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. And then that's the end of this outer loop. We start over. So it takes a long time. Well, it doesn't, it's not actually a long time. It's extremely, extremely quick, but it takes a long time relatively for the outer loop to run again. This inner loop completes its full cycle. Every single time the outer loop just iterates once. You can see overall, we have a lot of iterations. And the relationship here is you know, if we have x iterations on an outer loop and y iterations on the inner loop, we will be running x, y times, or we'll have basically multiply the number of times this runs by the number of times this runs, and that's how many total iterations you have. All right, so this example is kind of pointless. If we were just trying to generate numbers, uh, however many numbers this is, if we wanted to generate these exact numbers, fine, this is a good way to do it. If for some reason we need one and then 10, eight, six, four, two, zero, that's fine. But this isn't really a great showcase of why you might want nested iteration or nested for loops. So the first example I'll show you involves that game 2048 from a couple videos ago. Here is a game board. Um, after I've lost the game, I just randomly pressed arrow keys to try and finish it. And it is a four by four grid. Each cell has a corresponding value. And then we'll calculate a score 
by summing all of these cells together. And I structured my own version of this, the, the data at least, in an array I'm calling GameBoard. And it's based exactly off of this score, or this board, that I created by losing the game. 4, 32, 8, and 4 is the first row. 4, 32, 8, and 4. And there are four rows. So to sum all of the values here, I need to loop twice. The first loop, I'm going to move this down so we can group it together. The first loop is just going to iterate over this outer array. So one, two, three, four elements. So four let i equals zero. i is less than game board dot length i plus plus. So this is going to iterate through game board, or it's at least going to give me a number that I can use to access game board of i. And I could just console.log that, but I'll just be printing out each individual row. If I refresh the page, there we go. So I can't just sum this. I can't say a total variable plus equals this entire array. I need to then loop through each one of these subarrays and for each value, add it to some variable. So the question is, how do I loop through this array here? What I would probably do is make a new variable. I'll call it row, which will equal game board of i because this outer loop is just giving us an entire row at a time when we access using i we get one row and then i'm going to loop over row so depending on how many items are here it's always four i'm not going to hard code it because we could have a five by five game board or an eight by eight game board i'm going to use the length of the row so to loop over row all i need to do is four let let's go with j equals zero j is less than row dot length j plus plus and why don't we start by console dot logging row of i and up here i'll console dot log the row so you can just see the relationship refresh the page and it's hard to see what's going on here oh i actually made a mistake here a pretty common one i use the variable i inside of this loop there's nothing wrong with it in a technical sense. JavaScript doesn't care. But as far as my logic is concerned, the variable I want is j. j is going to be referring to each element in a row. i is referring to the actual row. So in the first iteration, i is 0. And I'm then using that to access 0, item 0, item 0, item 0, which is why I get all of these 4s printed out. So I want to access j, because j will be changing each time. And here's what we get. So our outer loop starts. We get this row. And then we loop over this. 4, 32, 8, and 4. That's each value. The inner loop finishes. There's nothing afterwards. So the outer loop is done on that iteration. And we start the next cycle. So now i is set to 1, which gives us this index. And we loop over this row. So why don't we sum it all together now? I'll get rid of these console.logs. And to do that, I need a total variable. Let total, let's go with total score. Start it at 0. And then in here, I'm simply going to total score plus equals, and then row of j. Remember, row is this entire element each time through. And then j gives me a number, like 0. So I'm going to take row of 0, add that to total score, row of 1, row of 2, row of 3. Add those all in, and then the loop starts over, and now we're working on this array. And then I do row of 0 and keep adding them in. Let's see what we get if I refresh the page. I didn't print out total score, but you can see it over here if I type it. 230. So this is still kind of a silly scenario, but this is a very real example of when you would use nested loops. We need to have at least two loops to access each element because we have two arrays that are nested. And if we had further subarrays, we would need another loop. All right, so that's it for now. Just take away the fact that we can have nested loops. Each iteration through the outer loop, we have a complete cycle of the inner loop before the outer loop increments or moves on to its next iteration.